It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction being the yo 94. Day in the neighborhood, my people. My brothers and sisters, I'm glad y'all back. Come fuck me again, bro. And I found a new channel. What is the name of this channel? Coffee House Crimes. Coffee House Crimes, man. I watched like one video from this dude so far, bro, and I'm like, okay, I'm fucking with it. Like, he almost in my A tier, bro. He up there. He up there now. And I'm finna watch another one with y'all, man. The title of it is The YouTuber That Murdered Another The Case of Asia McGowan. Now, I'm thinking The YouTuber That Murdered Another YouTuber, we, right? It's another YouTuber, more than likely. Uh, how he wording it or whatever. But, thing I'm wondering is, is it because of YouTube? Like, is this some YouTube beef? Because, bruh, I don't know how many people, how many of my people out there know it, but it's people on YouTube, like influencers who really be in beast with other influencers. Like, real live beats, bro. Like, real live. Like, and then they have such a big following. These them YouTubers, they got such a big following. And it's one side versus the other. And sometimes shit can get dangerous, man. Shit really can get dangerous. I digress, bro. I don't know if that's what it is, but we're going to see what it is, man. It probably ain't got nothing to do with YouTube why this dude or lady murdered the, uh, the other. You know what I'm saying? It might ain't got nothing to do with that. We finna see, though. But before we see my people, please, 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 please. Get whatever you make, need. Get what you need, please. Because we finna see why the hell this YouTuber murdered another YouTuber. Y'all got what y'all need? Y'all ready to go? Then let's fucking do it. Huh? Despite being a so-called Christian, Anthony Powell, who is a notorious YouTuber, used his platform to spread anger and hate. And as his platform grew, so did his confidence to share his extreme beliefs. In April of 2009, his dangerous rhetoric reached its peak after he had clashed with another YouTuber who had entirely opposite beliefs to him. But by the time those close to Anthony realised this, it was already too late. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, folks. What up, my boy? But no, bro, I want to say this real quick. Okay, it seems like this some religious motives or something. It don't seem like this got nothing really to do with YouTube, per se. It seems like this got to do with religion. Let's go. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to another Espresso Case by Coffeehouse Crime. Now, I've covered a few cases which involve YouTubers who went on to become murderers, but this case is slightly different. We're looking at a YouTuber who went on to murder another. But before jumping into the fine details of today's video, here's a message from one of Coffeehouse Crime's long-term sponsors. Welcome to Autumn, folks, the season oh, of love. Oh shit, he come with his uh, commercials. Let's get past it. Let's get past it. Y'all, hey, fuck with Babel. Fuck with Babel. Alright, let's start right there. As content creators. And now, with that said, let's begin today's case. Pull up a seat and grab yourself a coffee. This is the case of Anthony oh, Powell. Nice. Get whatever you may need. We're taking a moment away from our international travels to focus on a case that happened back in America. Welcome to the state of Michigan, folks. Situated between Chicago and Toronto, and surrounded by three lakes, the Great Lakes State can be found in the northeastern corner of the United States. It's well known as the home of the automotive industry, has great shorelines, and is described to have a bustling college town atmosphere. However, don't let that quaint description fool you, as Michigan is actually home to over 10 million residents, making it the 10th most popular state in all of North America. With more than 3,000 miles of freshwater shoreline, and being home to one of the world's international dark sky parks, breathtaking scenery and natural beauty dazzle many who dare to step into its great outdoors. Found to the eastern border of Michigan, and within Wayne County, we find the city of Dearborn. 
It has a population of 110,000 residents, and you can probably guess, but it primarily serves the automotive industry. Unfortunately, Dearborn has seen better days, and in recent years, its poverty rate has bounced between 25 and 35 percent. Sadly, this means that more than one in every four people who live here are in poverty. Putting economics to the side, one of the many families to inhabit this city was the Powell family. And while most of them were a secretive bunch, Anthony Powell was quite the opposite. Born in 1981, Anthony was born and raised in Dearborn by his parents Doris and Sam Powell. There is not much to say about his childhood. He grew up as a relatively unpopular kid, was quiet and shy throughout his younger years, and held an interest in film and media studies. Moving into his late teen years and onwards, he unfortunately struggled with depression. And although he was given antidepressants to help with his disorder, he didn't like to take them and often failed to keep to his schedule. Mm. Moving into the context- That's a bad sign, bro, when uh, somebody be subscribed pills for their anti-depression pills, you know what I'm saying, whatever, and then they don't take them, bro, that's when they go, they take a turn for the worse. When they don't take their pills, they take a turn for the worse, bro. Let's go of today's case, Anthony was a devout Christian. He was born and raised in a Christian household, and took the religion's teachings and practices very seriously. Now, unfortunately, Anthony's reputation nosedives fairly quickly from here on out. The young man has a very concerning history, filled with terrible opinions and ideas. For one, Anthony was extremely misogynistic. He hated most oh, women, shit. believed they should be nothing but servants to their husbands, and was particularly aggressive against black women. He wasn't scared to share these opinions either, but if there was one topic that Anthony was passionate about, it was Christianity, and even more so, how much he hated atheists. Anyway, it was around the mid-2000s that Anthony learned of the recently new website YouTube and its many early day creators. Now, dialing the years back to the mid-2000s can be almost nostalgic. We had many great things like Blockbuster, the iPod Mini, Blu-ray DVDs, and Battlefield 2 back when the series was good. Mm -hmm. This was a time when the world of the internet was still very much in its infancy, and alongside the early days of broadband came the early days of YouTube. YouTube was an entirely different platform back then. From the bro, I just gotta say this too, bro. It's so nostalgic now, bro. Like it's like in a way, I think of the early 2000s, like it wasn't that long ago. But when you watch them clips and you just look back at it for real, you like, yeah, that shit was like. Everything has changed so much since the early 2000s. That's what I'm trying to say, bro. Like, it feel like it wasn't that long ago, but so much has changed, bro. The user interface, right down to the volume slider. Things were just built different. This also includes the way that people interacted on YouTube. And back then, it was possible to reply to YouTube videos with a video response. But back mm. to our story. When Anthony realized that creators were able to share their opinions and thoughts with not hundreds but thousands of viewers, he decided to create his own videos on his very own channel. From 2007 onwards, Anthony built himself a platform on YouTube based around Christian-themed content, and he often leveraged his exposure to new audiences by responding to videos made by atheists. Here, he would rant and spread hate to all of those who opposed his opinions. Opinions which sometimes explored very controversial topics. Anthony believed that women should be submissive, subservient, and obedient to men. These negative views on women were doubled down against black women, whom he often accused of being overly promiscuous, and accused them of killing thousands of babies per day through abortions. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, pretty, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that some, some of these f***ing atheists are going to come on this video talking that because you know they're coming after me. And uh, we have these Muslims, these atheists, these Jehovah Witnesses, these, these tools of Satan, these troopers of Satan, these, these Muslims, these atheists, these other religions, any of these people, these homosexuals, are our enemies. They're our enemies. And we have to stand against them and take them down. Some say that any attention is good attention, which is a philosophy that Anthony clearly believed. And as his controversial videos grew in viewership, so did his notoriety. <sighs> 2042 is out here. It's all over. It is all over. The atheists have been defeated. These have been caught on them. <laughs> if it X is the truth. Bro, this man give all y'all Christians out there a bad name. He really do, bro. I'm not a Christian. I'm not religious. I don't have a religion, but he give y'all a bad name, man. I can see that already, bro. 
Little they and shut them down. I'm gonna tell you just how, I'm gonna show you and tell you just how pathetic and ignorant and stupid these atheists are. My God, this is it's beautiful. They're angry. They have so much rage and hate in them. Look at this. This is so pathetic. I swear to God. Those who agreed with Anthony gave him a voice, and all in the meanwhile, those who disagreed with him hardened his own opinions. In short, both forms of attention were fueled to the already violent fire. And to add to this, YouTube wasn't the only place where Anthony spread his violent beliefs. In the mid-2000s, forums were much more popular than they are today, and yeah. here Anthony would bully and troll atheists. This is where he found Asia McGowan, a 20-year-old woman and atheist. Asia was a warm, charismatic, and friendly young woman. She loved to dance and act and perform in comedy stints, and due to these interests, she also attended theatre classes in her school, and was part of a local dance group. Asia was also very progressive for her age. Her views on women's rights, religion, and atheism were the stark opposites of Anthony's, and unknown to him- I was just about to say that. It seemed like she the type of person- she is everything that he against, everything that he hate, bro, that's her. He, that, that's what this is. Everything that he is against, that's her. At the time, but ironically, Asia also lived in Dearborn. And to make things one step closer to home, she even attended the same school as him, Henry Ford Community College. Wow. After finding Asia's videos, Anthony became obsessive and aggressive towards her. He began to stalk and harass Asia online daily, and whenever new content was posted, he would use his own account and several other fake accounts to abuse her, with his sole intention to silence her beliefs. Oh, I, something just came to my mind. You know what it is? I think that, uh, I think atheists are right, they did evolve. You know what? Uh, us intelligent Christians, we didn't evolve, we came from God, and atheists are, are, are a result of evolution. They came from monkeys, wanna know why they came from monkeys? Because they're stupid as f they're stupid. And you know what I changed my mind? Atheists are not humans. They're monkeys. They're animals. They're animals! Moving from February Dude, through to ridiculous. April of 2009, the bullying and abuse persisted for several weeks. But despite the enormous hostile pressure, Asia stood strong through his insults. And in fact, on April the 6th, 2009, she posted a video on YouTube to take a stand against him and his fake accounts. So I had to give a shout out to the haters. Now the haters, this is what you can do. The haters, this you, you on my screen. Bounce off the screen and bounce off my page. People find something better to do and stop going on my page and write stupid messages, okay? It's ghetto, it's tacky, and you need to find some better time. Unfortunately, mm. Asia's response to Anthony's bullying only made things worse. And although he had tried to shut her down, he had so far failed. Anthony's videos clearly displayed the personality of a man who was unable to reason with others. But for Asia, that didn't matter. She wasn't here to just belly up in the face of a misogynist. And again, Anthony wasn't a man to rationalise, reason, or understand. He was simply furious with her. Those who saw the online war between Anthony and Asia were aware of his extreme behaviour. And although it was concerning to see, no one expected what he would do next. I mean, did no one expect this shit? Cause it's like, okay, yeah, okay, I agree. I wouldn't probably expect it, but after I hear that he murdered her, bro, it would be like, it kind of makes sense. The way he act in his videos and the foul language that he used against women and atheists and just all that, just how aggressive he is with the shit, bro. It's like, after somebody told me, hey, he killed uh, Asia, it'd be like, yeah, I can believe that. I really can believe that. Let's go. April the 10th, 2009. It was a Friday, and in the late hours of the morning, Asia McGowan was packing up after studying in the Grant McKenzie Fine Arts Center. She was the only one in classroom F111, located in Henry Ford Community College. Other students were currently hanging around the theatre and halls, but the classroom itself remained almost empty, if not for Asia. And that is when, out of the blue, an ominous figure walked through the classroom door. As Asia looked up and focused on the emerging man, she recognised the face. It was Anthony Powell. With no delay or hesitation, Anthony drew his firearm and aimed it towards Asia. Oh my Asia. god! Bro. Terror ran through her veins, and as she turned to run towards another exit, she screamed. But unfortunately, it was too late. 
Use he did this shit in public, just walked in a classroom and did this shit. Oh my lord. Man, this is the work of the devil. This is a devil. This is Satan, bro. This is one of those satanic people walking on earth right here, bro. Let's go. Using his own pump action shotgun, Anthony shot Asia McGowan square in the back. And as she lay dying, he dragged her back into the classroom and shot her once more. Wow. Terrified students called emergency services, to which officers responded almost immediately. And arriving just after 12.30pm, they stormed into the theatre. But just moments later, a third gunshot rang out, and this one was self-inflicted. After taking Asia's life and waiting several minutes, he had taken his own. You motherfucker. They see, bro, this the shit that get me so mad, bro. Like, bro, you take her life, then you take yours. So you can't be held accountable for the shit. But like I said, I ain't religious, bro. But I do believe in the afterlife. Like, I feel like it's some after, you know, we perish from this earth, bro. And that shit he did, whatever, next. Oh, he, 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 he fucked up forever. I do believe in that shit, bro. Like, you just can't... I don't feel like what you do in this life, you can just get up, get away with it. Like, I feel like you're going to be accountable at some point in time. He went accountable on this earth, bro. But that shit bullshit, bro. Officers found their bodies just moments later. And sadly, nothing could be done to save Asia McGowan. There was no way she could have survived her wounds. Identified in the videos by friends and neighbors, bloggers say Anthony Powell recently talked online about killing himself. There's absolutely nothing for me to do in this life. I don't, I don't have no purpose. I don't, there's no point. There's no point to me living anymore. I don't have my 9 millimeters anymore. The only thing that I have are my shotgun, and that's not going to be pretty, man. The man known as Tony, 48219 online, often ranted against atheism and evolution. And the face many saw was anger. I can smash you with ease, man. It's not that hard. <laughs> As news of the incident spread, the internet and even those at school learned of Anthony's aggression. They learned of his bullying, his abuse, and even her courage to stand up against it. But nothing could be done to bring Asia back, and several students required long-term therapy after getting caught up in the experience. The school itself had since endured a scarred reputation. But the real victims of this case are Asia's parents, as after hearing of the tragic news and then learning that Anthony had long stalked their daughter online, they felt greatly frustrated. Anthony's violent behaviour was not secretive or private. It was public and open, spread across several websites online. But unfortunately, we still live in a world where actions online are seen as much more frivolous than when compared to in real life. You when know. you come across unreasonable people without unreasonable behavior, there is a greater risk that their online rhetoric may be played out in reality. Yeah. And looking back at what happened to Asia, the warning signs were there as clear as day. Yeah. I mean, hindsight is both a blessing and a curse, but many doubted Anthony was able to do such a thing until it was too late. His parents claimed that they were completely unaware of his online profile, his videos, and even his aggressive rhetoric. But allegedly, they tried to help Anthony with his mood problems for several years to no avail. My child, I know, had challenges, but we tried for years to give him the help he needed, and it just wasn't out there. There was no way they could help my son. I don't know what was going on in his life recently that he should do this. He's dead. He's gone. There's nothing we can do. We didn't know anything about him doing anything like that, and I offer my condolences to that family. Bro, I believe his mom and dad are telling the truth, bro. I believe they ain't know nothing about that whole YouTube page that he had, YouTube channel, and all that hate and shit and all that talking because, bro, you, you and me know, like, we can act one way in front of our mama and dad that we can act a completely different way when we ain't in front of them, bro. Like, all of us can relate to that, bro. And sometimes your parents never know, bro, the shit that you be talking about, bro. Damn, I'm talking this shit now. My mama probably gonna find out. Oh, Lord, my child got a dirty mouth. But no, man, at this point, my mama know I cuss, but I'm just saying, like, y'all know what I'm saying. Let's go. I believe. And the outcome of this story does beg the big question. If this crime was so preventable and obvious, then who is at fault? Is it technically the responsibility of YouTube to make sure that aggressive bullies have no opportunity to thrive on their platform? Or was it the responsibility of other people watching Anthony's videos to report him? 
or even taking it offline, should the school or Anthony's parents have been more vigilant. It is a complex situation which seems to appear time and time again in videos like these. For example, the case of Pekka Eric Alvinen held very similar questions. Questions which no one seems to have the answer to. Not related to this case, but YouTube has since removed the feature to directly respond to people's videos with their own. Mm. And although more stringent measures are in place to reduce or prevent online harassment, it is still something that is seen daily. Even in 2022, both misogyny and racism are extremely prevalent issues. That's but true. back in 2009, it was evidently even worse. Asia courageously oh, stood up to it. both problems, and when this very same hate came knocking at her door, she was unwavering to its effect. It is such a devastating shame that she had the misfortune of crossing paths with such a deluded, aggressive, and unreasonable man. Were she still alive, the 20-year-old would now be 34, possibly mm, a mother mm, with mm. children of her own. But unfortunately, her entire future was ripped away from her, all for having different beliefs. And I think this is one of the only cases where I've seen a newspaper headline use the word idiot to describe a murderer. Mm, mm, mm. Hi there folks, and thank you so much for watching another video today by Coffee. Shit, thank you Coffee. What a name feel, y'all coffee hell crying. Appreciate that, bro. He good at it. Do, 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 do a good job, bro. And you know we coming back to him, but damn, man, this case just sad, bro. I mean, all this shit, everything pretty much we watch be sad in a way, but I don't know, man. That was just a beautiful young lady, bro. And like he said, she would have been 34 today if he would have never did that, bro. And it, it's one thing I disagree with what he said on. Like, I really, really, really disagree with what he said on. And that is that back in 2009, uh, the massage, being a misogynist or being uh, against atheism was worse than it is today. I disagree with that, bro. I feel like in 2022, bro, we more divided than ever, bro. And I feel like as time go on, we just continue to just get more and more divided, bro. divided, bro. I don't care what we talking about, goddamn. Political with the Democratic and the Repu uh, Democratic and the Republican Party. Damn, I can't talk now, bro. But I feel like that's more divided than ever. Or just groups who this Black Lives Matter movement, how they just they so divided compared to everybody else. Or the LGBTQ community, how they just so divided against everything. Is like you gotta be in one certain group, bro, and. And you gotta go against everybody who oppose your group, your views in that group. You gotta go against them. I mean, I don't know, bro. I feel like we more divided, and I feel like hate is stronger now than it ever been, man. And I think it's gonna, it's just gonna continue to get that way. Look at like stuff going on overseas and stuff like all this stuff been happening. But I just feel like the more time go on, the more it get worse. That's just my opinion, though, bro. Man, dude, just crazy, man. Like I said. I'm not a religious person, man, but I don't even know. I can't even call him a Christian. Like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I don't, like I said, man, that was more devilish than anything, bro. That was more devilish than anything, bro. Like, that was satanic. And when I say satanic and devilish, I really just mean evil. Like, that shit was just evil, bro. And I don't think the people who are really Christians out here, I, I, I don't think you can be a Christian and be evil. Like, that just, it, it don't go together. It don't go together, bro. It don't go together. It's like fucking peanut butter and ketchup or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't put both of them on a sandwich, bro. It just don't work, bro. Like, I don't know. Like I said, I ain't trying to offend nobody, bro, because I'm not a Christian, but so I don't want to speak on people's religion as if I am one. But I think I can ask any real Christian, and they'll be like, uh, duh. No, 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 no. This is not what we're about. That crazy, bro. That was good, man. God damn, huh? Hey, had to come back to him, like I said, man. I'm glad y'all came back to me. Please, 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 my people, come back again. Hit that like button, comment, all that good, 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 good stuff. And until then, my friends, the Bing Bang Bay Ledge.